Well, good Saturday morning, everyone. The time has come. I finally got my Willwood brake kit, so we're gonna roll with a little intro and get into it. All right, so as you know, I've done a lot of work to this thing. I'm to the point where I'm finally doing the, the calipers all the way around. Now, initially I was gonna do the six piston up front, four piston out back. But the more I thought about it, um, I don't track the car. And in stock form, total on all four corners, this thing has six pistons. Just doing four pistons all the way around, that gives me 16 pistons. So that's still two and a half times as much, more than enough stopping power, uh, better brake feel and aesthetics as well. So I'm happy to save the $500 on losing those two pistons up front. No issue there at all. And also doing that, I can retain my stock rotors which is i think uh, 13 up front and 12 in the back which is more than enough again I, I don't track this thing i just do some spear driving on occasion so i'm okay with that the rotors i have are two years old maybe got six thousand miles on them so i'm just gonna reuse the damn things uh this kit was about thirteen hundred dollars for all four corners calipers and the pads this seems like a pretty straightforward job it's just a matter of taking off your old calipers. It hooks right up to the old mounting spot on the knuckle. No adapters needed. Later on, if you wanted to run a six piston up front, you would need a little adapter that brings out the caliper just a little bit to clear a larger rotor. So that is always an option in the future as well. I already got everything off on the car. I left one wheel up front, which I'll show you how to do the install. Like I said, it should be pretty painless. It's just a matter of taking off the old caliper, the, the bracket that holds it, putting the new Woolwood style caliper on there, curing it, putting the uh, the cartridge style brake pads in, and you're done. And then we gotta bleed the brakes, which I'll, I'll show you how I do that as well. So I'm gonna go ahead, turn you around, and show you the box and all the goodies you get inside. I have not opened it yet either, and we'll see what we get. This weekend, I'll make a second video, because I still have to get alignment for the rear end, and then uh, I'll give you a review on how I how I feel they are for the price. And uh, if anyone needs some some calipers from a C5 Z06, let me know, because I'll have some for sale. All right, let's go ahead and get this box open. Well, this is a rather heavy, large box for just four calipers. All right, there we go. Stickers, of course. Should be the individual calipers right here. Oh cool, it comes with new hardware for the rear. I was gonna use the old, but that works. So brake pads, these should be the rears right here. And here are the fronts, a little bigger. more hardware, which is outstanding because I thought I was going to use the old, which is really cool that they give you new hardware for the uh, mounting of the account. I'm going to open up a front and a rear for you guys. Show you uh, what we're dealing with. So I'll go ahead and show you the, the rear pads real quick. It's just cartridge style. And when I show you how these install, they're really, really cool. Yeah, they just slide inside and they're held on top by a little pin. Really, really easy to do brake jobs. It was exactly the same on the uh, on my C7. Man, they love decals. It's pretty cool because they're actually uh, should be washer for your. Oh, I see. So this is your where you install your um, your brake line, and you can bleed it from here or here, but probably the one on the bottom. No, the one on top. Uh, these are very light, which is pretty cool. Right, you can see there, four piston. Boom, 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 boom. Right now, the rears only have a single piston. So, and this is probably, like I said, a, uh, a washer for either this or this. I'll let you guys know as I do the install. I'm gonna front pads, just in case you're curious. A lot more meaty than the ones in the rear. Oh wow. You think the 
priest out. Very pretty. I like that. See, it's a little bigger than the stock one without the, the bracket. Not bad. I like it. See, four pistons inside there. Cool. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get the uh, rear ones installed because um, they're all four corners exactly the same. And I'll walk you through one side of the front so there's no confusion. And we'll do a quick brake bleed. All right, I threw the rear ones on real quick. I'm going to show you how to do one front one, but uh, it's kind of scary when things go so easy. This is probably one of the best bolt-on kits for anything I've ever used. Everything fits perfect. It looks great. Huge difference. As you can see, I painted all the uh, rotors today on the inside. Stripped them down and painted them. I got to do the one up there, but I'm going to take that one off just for training. And then the other side, I'll, I'll throw on the caliper for you. But uh, yeah, it looks great. I love it compared to the old caliper. The size, it's, it's almost laughable. Amazing just all around. Aesthetically so far, very pleased with these things. The build quality is really, really good. So I'm going to go ahead to the front. And we're going to start taking off a caliper just to show you how it, how you do it. And I'll show you how to put on a new one. Alrighty, guys. Don't let this job scare you. You can do this with very basic tools. You need a 15 millimeter, a 21, and a 13 adjustable wrench and a hammer. And you can do this job. Not hard at all. So the first thing you're going to want to do, take off your brake line for your caliper, which is back here. You can do it after the fact, but you're going to be fighting the damn thing. It's just a little banjo fitting type deal. Uh, you're going to use a 13 millimeter and make sure you have a bucket because you're going to get brake fluid coming out of it, which is fine because we're, we're going to change it. You're going to need your uh, lack of space impact wrench. All right, you should get some uh, brake fluid by now. Let it drip, like I said, make it easier later on. More fluid you get out now, the easier it is to get the new fluid in. All right. And then on your brake line fitting here. You're gonna have two washers you gotta take off because we're, we're gonna replace those with new crush washers that came in the kit. They're kind of tight. They kind of screw off. Discard them right in there. The bottom one's kind of hard to get off. I had to use a flathead to kind of manipulate it a little bit, but no big deal. <clears throat> that one's really on there. Well, I'll come back to this. I'll get this off off camera and then uh, we'll continue. Okay, next one we're gonna need is a 15 millimeter for your caliper pins up here. And chances are, it's going to spin on the inside. It's like a little, little lock nut deal. And you don't want to take it all the way out because when you try to get the other one off, the whole thing will kind of pop out. It's kind of pain in the ass. So, get the bottom one loose first. It's hot as hell in here. It was like 100 degrees here in Virginia. All right, cool. Now, this thing should just kind of slide off. And it did. Great. Cool. As you can see, two pistons on this guy. The new one's going to have four. Let's take off. Don't need these guys anymore. All right. And then this battery's dying, of course. All right, next thing you got to do is the caliper bracket, which is a 21 millimeter. These can be kind of a bear to get off. All right, and that's pretty much it as far as disassembly goes. <clears throat> and all the hardware, like I said, uh, Will Wood sent new hardware, which is outstanding. Uh, so all you gotta do now is just take this off. There's two little clips right here on these guys. These, these just pop off, and then I'm going to clean the hell out of this. I'm gonna reuse it. I'm gonna tape it off and paint this with some uh, high temp paint, like the other three wheels I've already done. Um, but for now, we'll go to the other side, and I'll show you the install process for the Will Wood brake. Again, it's exactly the same and all, all four wheels just mirrored, if that makes sense. All right, here we go. Front side here. As you can see, this rotor looks much better, much more pretty. Uh, first thing you wanna do is get your caliper bolts ready. These, are the same, these were the same as your brackets, but they give you new ones in the kit. Um, you just need one washer for this kit specifically. They give you a whole bunch of different shims in here for the larger brake kits, because you gotta shim it to make sure the rotor is perfectly aligned inside the middle of the caliper. But for this kit, it shouldn't be an issue. So first thing we're gonna do is take our handy dandy caliper here. Uh, both are the same. So the fronts will work on the fronts and the rears will work on the rears. We'll go ahead and line it up here. All right, let's 
guys all set. I'll put the torque spec for all these guys in the description below. All right, next thing we gotta do is install our brake line. As, as you can see, I fitted the new crush washers that came with it. And be careful, because where it goes, there's a little sticker. Make sure you take that off first, which I didn't. The uh, brake line is 125 inch pounds, top of my head. I don't have my torque wrench, but I'll bring it over here in a second and do it, but I won't bore you with that. All right, so quick check. Our rotor's good, spins freely. Everything's torqued up. Next thing we gotta do, there's a little uh, kind of bridge on the other side of this. It's super intuitive to use. Um, you just need a, what size is this? Well, it's a 3 16 uh, Allen key. This works just fine. Let's go on one end right here. And it's loose from the manufacturer. You can take it out with your hand. Boom. And this little guy. You can see it goes right in the middle of it and holds kind of holds the, the brake calibers in place, if you will. Um, now it's just a matter of taking our new cartridge style brake pads and we're just going to slide them in. I'm going to put a little bit of brake quiet on the back where it meets the uh, the pistons there. Uh, put the pin back in and we're pretty much in business. The machine finish and all of this, everything fits so damn good. I'm so impressed with Willwood. I think this is the first time I've used any of their like products or anything. The way the, the brake pads slip in, it's so gratifying and feels so good. Just throw this guy back in on top. We're going to torque it down. Uh, the torque specs on this guy is not really accurate. It says tight, but not too tight. So, all right, now we're just going to tighten this guy down. I hate dealing with like Allen keys. It's always hard to get a good, secure feel. Don't like it. All right, uh, it's done. So I'm going to go ahead and finish painting the rotor on the other side, get that one buttoned up, and then boom, and come back here in a second. Uh, we will bleed these brakes. Okay, calipers are all set all the way around. They look amazing. Super excited about this. To bleed this guy, it should be pretty straightforward. All four of these have bleed little nipples right there make sure you use the top don't use the bottom because you're not going to get anywhere um now how i do it is on brand new calipers i crack each one in all four corners just a little bit and i'm going to add my dot three brake fluid until i get a little bit of dribble out of all four corners it's kind of like a little gravity feed if you will it gets a nice primer and then i have a one man deal right here which i start with the furthest caliper away from the master cylinder uh, I'll show you this process once I get to it. It's really, really simple. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and fill the reservoir. And like I said, all four of these are cracked open just a little bit. And then once I see fluid starting to come out, I will close them all. And they will, we will start bleeding from the rear passenger side. Oh, and by the way, I'm using dot three because I don't track the car. Now, dot three has a lower boiling point. However, it's better at not collecting water in the fluid. A dot four is better if you're gonna track a lot. However, it does collect water and you're gonna, you, you might have to change your fluid more often. So I have no issue using dot three and that's what the car calls for. So that is what I'm using. All right, on the last wheel here, I always start on the back, the furthest from the master cylinder, work my way, driver rear, and then the uh, passenger, and finally I'm doing the driver side here. Uh, very simple to do, especially with this little tool. You might have seen this on my channel, I used it for my, uh, my brake master cylinder, which worked amazing. Uh, so all I gotta do is crack the little bleeder valve on this guy right there. Not the big brass one, but the little tiny one right there on top of it. About a quarter turn. That's enough right there. I'm gonna throw this little guy on there like that. And we're going to draw a vacuum on this. Now, I need two hands to do this. So I'm going to put you down. But I'm going to hold my finger on this. I'm going to draw a vacuum of 15 right there. And I'm going to watch for the flow in this cup. And when I stop seeing a little tiny air bubbles, I know I'm good. And I can go ahead and close up this little bleeder valve right there. And we should be all set with the bleeding process. All right, that concludes the open box install and bleeding process. Any questions, feel free to ask me. One more thing. When you are bleeding after each wheel, check your 
master cylinder reservoir to make sure you don't have fluid in there. And then once all the wheels are done, pop it off. Now, seeing if I have any sponginess when I drive around today, I might try to pull a vacuum from the master cylinder, kind of how I did with the brake. So I might, it might feel fine, I don't know. Um, in any case, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and get the wheels on this thing and take a shower because I feel gross and go for a ride, get this thing aligned and hopefully have another video early this week, next week with how I like them and just a kind of farting around, driving around video. Um, that's all I got today, guys. So go enjoy your weekend. I hope it's a good one and I'll catch you guys in the near future. Mark out.